This video is only part of an unpaid, unbiased, in-depth review from an average rider's perspective, so check out the rest in the link below at thegoodride.com. If you want real advice, fill out the Me Harmony profile in the link below so I can help you properly. And if this video helps, please consider donating or buying through our links. Thanks for watching. Welcome to The Good Ride, where we've been geeking and moderately tweaking over gear, year over year. And this yeah. is the Jones Mind Expander, new for 2023. This is a demo board, and the top sheet is going to be nothing like this in production. It's not going to pick up every little stain yeah. and mark. It's, it's going to look very nice in production. Next to it is the Ultra Mind Expander, and a board that's similar, but far from being the same, the Cardiff Pagoda. And this is a 158. These are 154s. I own the 158, but thanks to Mason and the boys at Gravity Sports at Mount Bachelor, I got on the 155 and compared it to these two one day. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is Davey Boy. What up, people? I got this in a wide variety of conditions. I got on the 162 in some pretty good powder. Davey, you put a lot of time on the 162. Oh yeah, I was lucky as all hell. I got to take it out, really good springtime conditions up on Mammoth Mountain, deep days up at Alpenthal in Washington, and then I got to blast this thing around Mount Bachelor in all conditions. And I rode it primarily with Union Atlas and Burton Kendo's. But I did also get on this with the Jones Christensen binding. And I rode this with my Burton Ion boots and my Union Force binding. And to give you a short summary, the Mind Expander is no longer a surf rocker board, but has a directional camber profile that is camber from the tail going to just a little bit before the big long spoon nose. So it's no longer the ultra in easy float and powder board. It's now more a traditional to alternative free ride kind of ride that is much more similar to the ultra mind expander. It's just different construction, a little more damp, but still very poppy. A very good board for groomers now carves really hard. It's kind of more of a competitor now to the Stratos and the flagship it's just a little more turny, a little more setback version of those boards. So when it comes to sizing, my weight was just too much for these 54s. I bucked and bounced them around too much. I think my size nine boots were a really good fit, but that's why I normally ride the old Mind Expander and Ultra Mind Expander in a 58. That's a little bit better for my weight. It just handles groomers better and especially powder better. And when I got on the Pagoda 55, it felt a little better for me, even though I definitely prefer the Pagoda 58 as well. I'm 6'4", 240, and I have a size 12 boot. I thought the 62 was a perfect size for more of the hard pack centric all mountain type of ride. But if I was getting this for a powder specific board, I would probably want to go for the 166. Yeah, and it would probably be better on groomers carving too. Yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah it probably would be. Yeah, and when I rode the 162 just for a little bit in groomers, I was like, yeah, this is too big for me for sure. Um, the 58's pushing it. I wish they had a 56, <laughs> but that's just me and my specs. And when it comes to the shape, this is tapered and directional. It's not super tapered, but it's Definitely more tapered than most free ride boards. I think it's 20 mil. It has a camber profile that goes well past the front inserts now. So the combination of those two things makes it very stable between the feet, but very back foot weighted, very set back and surfy for a traditional free ride board, but not super set back and surfy compared to a lot of alternative free ride boards and like snow surfers it just doesn't feel as surfy as it used to because it used to have just this excessive rocker in the nose but it still isn't technical and locked in either so it's still fine if you're an intermediate and you want to get on 
any of these boards. I think the Pogoda, the Ultra Mind Expander, and of course the Mind Expander, what we're primarily talking about, all do really well there for intermediates who want to skid their turns when they get off their game. And I don't feel the lifted sides in the nose when I'm riding groomers, and it doesn't feel washy as long as I have proper back foot weight. Yeah, I actually thought it was a really unique blend of being able to be like a super hard charging, confident groomer hard pack board. And then when you got it into powder, I thought it kind of felt a little bit more surfy than I would expect coming off of how much of a camber dominant ride it felt like on groomers. Yeah, good point. You don't feel the lifted sides and you don't really feel the 3D spoon nose when you're on uh, groomers, but once you get in powder, you really, it, it, it does shine and it's there. So I think it is a really good versatile ride. It's kind of like the same thing with the Ultra Mind Expander too, in terms of feel underfoot. And the Palgoda, it doesn't have the lifted sides of the nose, doesn't have that spoon nose. And when it comes to edge hold, all three of these boards grip exceptionally well. They're not like total hard snow specialists, but I found that the slightly disrupted side cut of the Mind Expander and the Ultra Mind Expander held really well in hard snow. And whenever I hit a hard patch, I just had to dial back my commitment to the turn a little bit and it would grip and hold through. And if I was ready for it, it really powered through a hard snow turn well. What surprised me is the Powder Goda doesn't really have like a massive disruption in the side cut, but that 55 on a same day test in the same snow, same run, grip just as well, if not better sometimes. So it surprised me. All three of them have really competent hard snow edge hold. We actually did have a really bricked up January and I did take this out. I don't have any footage of it, but I did take it out on a really hard day that I didn't think would be worth filming and this board was ripping the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, so it definitely has a really good edge hold. So when it comes to flex, this Mind Expander has a medium stiff bordering on stiff flex. Between the feet, it's very stiff. It's stiffer than most medium stiff boards. Then you have a softer nose that's more medium and a tail that is very stiff too. So it feels like the flex goes to about here and then starts to soften up in the nose. Yeah, really nice for doing some spooned out powdered nose butters. Yeah. I didn't like nose buttering on groomers because of the spoon nose, yeah, yeah, but, but in powder, in oh powder, yeah. yeah. And you look at the Ultra Mind Expander, it is very similar in flex, only this is a different construction. So it just has a little more snap back. It feels a little lighter, a little poppier than the regular Mind Expander, but it's close. Now, mind you, this is the 58 Pogoda, but you can see it's a little bit more almost medium between the feet it's kind of more medium stiff and the tail is medium to medium stiff a little softer than the middle but not by much and then the nose is really soft it's a really powder friendly mellow nose the new camber profile along with that same old stiff flex makes this pretty hard to butter off the tail but it has a very poppy ride. Even the regular is pretty poppy. The Ultra Mind Expander is more poppy. It's lighter. It just, like when I all lead off things, it just popped higher. I just, it was a noticeable difference. But this is no slouch. The Cardiff Pogoda has a more softer, more rubbery, more damp flex than both the Ultra Mind Expander and Mind Expander. But still, when you lean into it, it pops almost as much as the regular Mind Expander. And I think it's a, just a good flex personality. When it comes to how it performs in all conditions, I actually enjoyed the Pogoda better when it was hard and micro bumpy because it absorbed things a little better where these have a little more feedback. But the Mind Expander is no slouch and it can handle a lot of lot of conditions. And hard micro bumpy snow though, it does get a little cranky. When it comes to speed and base glide, Jones boards just make the fastest bases out there at this price point. I just 
think they kick ass. And this just has exceptional base glide, especially when well waxed. Even better is the Ultramind Expander. But what surprised me is the Palgoda is really close. And it's, it feels just about the same as the regular Mind Expander. All three of these boards have exceptional base glide. When I hopped on the Mind Expander, it was zoom in. I actually had to start like taking my run-ins for my jumps about half the length that I was on the board I was riding before. I think if you want to point it in good conditions, it's definitely the Mind Expander over the Ultra Mind Expander, for sure. This is just a little more chattery at speed, even though this has a faster base. This is just a little more damp. And what really surprised me is this softer Palgoda was almost the most comfortable at speed. These two have less clown shoe. The nose doesn't do this, but the nose clown shoe bounce quiets down by the time you're at the bindings. And so all three of these boards can point it really well. But if I like speed a little bit more, you want the Mind Expander over the Ultra Mind Expander or the Palgoda over the Ultra Mind Expander. That's the better call. Yeah, and for me, the 162, I'm 240. I thought it was just great. It was locked in, super stable, really comfortable, really confident. And I had a great time just straight lining it. The turn initiation with these 54s was lightning quick, but even with the 58 and the Ultramind Expander 58 that I've tried in the past, it's really quick edge to edge, like medium, fast to fast. And then when you get it over on edge, the side cut isn't super turny, but it's like one of the most turny camber boards in Jones line. And then when you get it on edge, you can across the groomer carve, you can circle carve fairly well. You can make longer down the line drawn out S turns really well too. So it's balanced, but on the turny side, especially for Jones. So if you want a turny Jones board, these are the ones. The Palgoda surprisingly has less camber than these two, but it had similar spring and really good drive out of the turn. I just loved all three. Yeah, I thought this board was great. It was definitely was a total high speed carver for me. It took me a second to kind of feel it out because I was because I had ridden the Mind Expander in the past with the full rocker. But once I adjusted my stance and I set my foot back a little bit more to kind of tap into that backseat camber a little bit, and this thing was ripping. It was totally enjoyable. Really fun, not the tightest of turners, but it holds an edge like a champ and is definitely gonna just rip across the groomer when you want it to. When it comes to powder, yeah, if you're thinking old Mind Expander, don't think that. It's just not the same anymore. Yeah, It's now the same as the Ultra Mind Expander. There's a good setback on board. It's not amazing, but it's definitely more than a lot of free ride boards out there, but not really as much as a lot of snow surfers out there that are really on the tail. So you have some tail for landings and jumps and and more drive out of the turn and it handles uneven snow better than a lot of really, really set back boards. And you still have a great nose with a great turning experience because of that spoon nose and powder. It just rolls so easy edge to edge. I personally prefer the Palgoda now in powder over these because it has so much more early rise, but this is still no slouch. Very good powder board. Yeah, I definitely thought there was a little bit more back leg work with this new backseat camber than when it had the full rocker before. But like I said earlier, I still just really love the way this board goes from such camber type of carving experience to once you get it in powder, you, the, the surf personality of it really does come alive. And I found the 62 to be really nimble in the trees. I, I was riding it over around Alpental where you get more of the Northwest packed in trees. Like mm -hmm. Mount Bachelor, we have tons of visibility. And I loved the Mine Expander. It felt like, especially kind of riding powder through the trees, it just felt like it surfed through and just kind of just blissfully turned with ease. Overall, I think the addition of Camber makes this a much more recommendable ride for all conditions. Where before the old Surf Rocker Mind Expander was a great board for having fun turning on groomers, but not really getting a lot of spring out of the turns. It was, it was fun for what it was with all that rocker and it was playful and very surfy, but still not so far set back on the tail. 
Now when you add this camber, it just comes alive on groomers and it's really fun. If you like a little stiffer, a little more aggressive ride, go Mind Expander. If you want something lighter and poppier, go Ultra Mind Expander. If you want something a little more softer, but still very damp and more playful, go Pau Goda. Well said. I love the Mind Expander. You cannot go wrong with this board.